Hey everybody, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman. Welcome inside Studio 34. Today I'm joined by Tom Vecchio, who's going to preview tonight's NBA slate. What's happening, Tom? I'm doing well. You know, six games. I think we have a little bit of everything we need on this slate. Uh, let's hop right in. Let's dive right in and let's start at the top. Your highest priced player, your superstar you're building around tonight. The superstar you can build around every night. It's the king, LeBron James. Why do you like LeBron over the, some, of, some of the other choices that are out there? Yeah, tonight's slate, uh, we're waiting on the Anthony Davis news. He's currently listed as questionable. And, you know, we look at LeBron's stats this season, uh, 31% usage rate, 1.46 fandom points per minute. And that's with Anthony Davis on the court. He's going for a double-double or triple-double in these games that AD is playing. And when Davis is off the court, those numbers jump to a 44.4% usage rate with 1.80 FanDuel points per minute. You know, we have a three-and-a-half-point spread, you know, modest 2-11 over-under against the Pacers. But listen, if he's putting up these type of numbers with Davis on the court, we're going to be seeing even more from him. And legitimately, $11,000 could be too cheap for him if we knew that AD was potentially ruled out beforehand. I'd be willing to pay you 12.1, 12.2 for LeBron in this spot. It's just all of the usage, all of the minutes for him, especially if Davis is out. We're waiting on Anthony Davis. That's the big one. And if he doesn't play, questionable for now. LeBron James, the obvious play tonight. But remember, lineups lock about 7 p.m. Eastern time for the main slate. So make sure you check if AD's out there. If he's not, LeBron James because an obvious play because, well, he always is. Up next, let's get to the Pelican superstar. That is Drew Holiday. Pelicans have struggled as of late, but Drew Holiday, he hasn't. He's in a good spot tonight against the Nets. Tom, why do you like him? Yeah, like you said, this could be, uh, you know, one of the best fantasy games of the night. You know, both teams are in the top 10 when it comes to pace, a 229-point over-under. 8.3, I think, is a very solid price for Holiday. You look at shooting guard overall tonight, and we have Donovan Mitchell up at 8.7, and I know a lot of people would want to go to him. Mike Conley should be coming back, but that game has a 206, you know, 206 over-under. Why would we not just go a few hundred dollars cheaper to Holiday at 8.3? with this massive 229 over under. You know, 1.08 uh, FanDuel points per minute for Holiday is amazing, averaging 17 field goals per game over five threes. The Nets are somewhat strong against shooting guards this year, but we have uh, Lonzo Ball out of the starting lineup recently for the Pelicans, and Holiday is just taking even more shots. He's up there as one of the best point per dollar plays for me tonight. He's always a good player. I've been a big Drew Holiday guy. The Pelicans have struggled as of late, and that's an understatement. Drew Holiday... He hasn't. He's a big part of the solution. A lot to like with Drew Holiday tonight and every night, so consider putting him into your lineups. One more stud to get to before we find out how to pay for all these studs, and that brings us to Julius Randle. The New York Knicks uh, big man has done a little bit of everything except hit foul shots, but that's okay. We don't really need him to do that. Julius Randle, why do you like him uh, in this matchup against Atlanta? Yeah, like you said, he's doing a bit of everything, and you know, at 7.6, a lot of people might not consider him a stud, but I think we have to look at the slate overall, where we have Trey Young on the opposite, opposite side of this game. We have Kawhi Leonard, we have Paul George, but we have the Clippers as 12-point home favorites against the Suns. They're on the second night of a back-to-back, -back, the Suns are, so do we really need to see Kawhi and Paul George put up 60 FanDuel points in order for them to win that game? I don't think so, and you know, Trey Young, this is a pace-down spot for the Hawks, which means it's a pace-up spot for the Knicks. With the Knicks coming in right now at 28th in the league, the, the Hawks are up at 8th. We have a solid usage rate on Randall at 25%. 0.99 FanDuel points per minute is so, so consistent. And we look at this recent West Coast road trip the Knicks just came back from, and he's putting up 35 FanDuel points or more in three of these past four games. We're talking about consistency every single night, combined with the fact that the Hawks are dead last in the league against power forwards, allowing 49.8 FanDuel points per game. It's pace up. The usage rate is there. It's not going to be an amazing game with both teams sitting on six wins right now, but the FanDuel production is should be there from Randall. We hope the FanDuel production is there for Randall. As you mentioned, the Hawks struggle against power forwards. Randall uh, does so much um, for his, his position. Should be in a good spot tonight. Uh, the Knicks, they play better as of late. And let's see if that continues this evening. Moving on to some of the valuable plays, because they're valuable, because we need to fit them in there. They're cheaper. So let's start with Josh Hart of the Pelicans. Season long, people have added Josh Hart. They've dropped Josh Hart. They don't really know what to do with him. Why do you like him in DFS tonight? Well, we have J.J. Redick out for the Pelicans. He was ruled out yesterday. Uh, and we already have Josh Hart playing 30 minutes or more in three of his past four games. Now, I'm not sure if Hart's going to be in the starting lineup. 
Um, you know, could be Holiday, Hart, uh, Kenrich Williams, Brandon Ingram, uh, and Derek Favors as their five. But we're talking about 30 plus minutes from a guy who's a bench player, and now their rotation is shortened uh, with Reddick out. Of course, this game environment, as we mentioned with Drew Holiday, is fantastic 229 point over under. And we're looking at 24.5 Fandle points in three of his past four games for Josh Hart. He would need 25 exactly in order to reach five. 5x value, and he's basically doing that, and now we might be seeing extra minutes with with Redick out. So it really just lines him up for a great, consistent, may not be a ceiling-type play, but he can hit value and allows a little bit of roster flexibility. I think that's the key, right? With J.J. Redick out, Josh Hart should be having a chance to step up, right? Minutes should go up. Uh, versatility goes up. He's going to see a lot of minutes in this game. I, I think Josh Hart is one of those no-brainer value plays on tonight's slate. Up next, we get to Landry Schmidt, who's returning for the Clippers tonight. Clippers have been beat up um, as of late. A ton of guys were out on Saturday. We expect Kawhi Leonard to play tonight, but some of these other guys we're not so sure about. Why do you like Landry Schmidt? Yeah, we have uh, Lou Williams and Pat Beverly both questionable for tonight. Like you said, they're a bit banged up. They missed their most recent games, and in that time, we saw Schmidt and Terrence Mann get the start on Saturday. Uh, he's 3.7K in that first game back from his injury. He played 20 minutes no, very modest 14.8 Fandle points. We see a lot of the usage going to uh, Kawhi and Paul George uh, and even Montrezl Harrell at times. Uh, but I love the savings on him. He should be in line for 20, 25 minutes tonight if he's the starter, if, if Pat Beverly and Lou Williams are ruled out. Uh, again, it's a 226 point over under. The 12 point spread is actually interesting when it comes to you know, one of the value plays on the Clippers because if they rest Kawhi and Paul George as the game goes on, if they have a large lead, this is when he can really, really start to exceed value. The matchup is good against uh, point guards against the Suns. 47 points they're allowing, Fandle points that is per game to point guards as the ninth worst in the league. $3,700 for a potential starter. Just sign me up. Again, the big question here is the status of Lou Williams and Patrick Beverly. We don't have that yet. So if they're out, Landry Schmidt, much like Josh Hart, a no-brainer. But lineup slot isn't until 7 p.m. Eastern time for that main slate, so make sure you're paying attention. If they're out, Landry Schmidt has a ton of opportunity tonight. If they play, well, he still has a chance for that extra playing time in the case of a blowout against Phoenix here tonight. A lot of possibilities for Schmidt, but he's very much on our radar. All right, we talked about one side here with the Clippers and everything that's going on with them. Tom, let's go to the other side with Phoenix and a player that's been playing well as of late, Mikael Bridges. Why do you like Bridges in this matchup against L.A.? Yeah, we have two teams that have you know a, quite of a bit of injury news, uh, lineup notes. Uh, we have Devin Booker, who's missed the two most recent games for the Suns. In that time, we saw Bridges get the start playing 30-plus minutes in both of those games, putting up 28 and 33 Fanduel points. Now, if Booker doesn't play for the third straight game, we should see Bridges fully back in that starting lineup. Again, they're on the second night of a back-to-back, seeing you know, hopefully 30-plus minutes. But the Suns will also have DeAndre Ayton coming back tonight after his 25-game suspension. And now you could say, oh, that's going to take usage away from Bridges. But if we actually look at his stats this season, he has a 14.4% usage rate, and he's posting .96 Fanduel points in that time. So not a high usage rate guy, but he's being very productive when he sees the ball. So even if Eaton comes back into the lineup, plays 30 plus minutes, and we have no Devin Booker again, Bridges will be in the starting lineup and he can easily hit value with that very, very solid .96 fan points per minute. Hitting value is the key. Again, he's cheap tonight. So if he can just reach that number, which is what you're obviously aiming for, you're in a good spot. You don't need Mikael Bridges to go off. You just need to do... Have him do what he's been doing for a while now. That consistency is what we're looking for. Mikael Bridges should be your guy tonight as your final value piece. That's going to do it for us here on the FanDuel Hurry. We appreciate you watching, tuning in, and hopefully playing on tonight's DFS slate. Good luck tonight, Tom. All right, man. Have a good one. You as well. And everybody watching, enjoy the games tonight. Tomorrow, I'll be joined by Jim Asanis, who will take a look at DFS for week number 16 in the NFL. Have a great night, everybody, and we'll see you tomorrow.